Aditya Narayan joins us now, Head of Institutional Research with Edelweiss. Let's take our conversation forward. Uh, I was just speaking as a as an observer, as an you know, as a market commentator, that markets when they stop reacting to bad news, that's the first sign that we are nearing a bottom. Now it's too early to say that. I was only looking at Indigo and ZS2 examples. That bad set of numbers, the stocks have gone higher. What is your sense after a brutal May? Are we in for a decent June? See, I think from a very short term, maybe you could argue with uh, you know such kind of an analysis uh, in terms of the market not reacting to bad news. Uh, but I try to look at it from a more fundamental perspective. Um, and I think what has happened so far is that the first shock of inflation, because that is the underlying theme and underlying trend, both for India and globally, right? So I think the first, uh, the, the first set of sets of reactions uh, to inflation have been, whether it's been policy, whether it's been the rate hike, um, uh, you know, whether it's been the export bans, right? So that's the first set of reactions that you've seen, which have impacted the market uh, upfront, right? I think what you've got to wait for, uh, and that might take a little bit more time, is uh, is for whether inflation has done any more damage to the underlying economy or to underlying uh, businesses, right? And I think that will probably start showing through in the next quarter. In the current quarter, which is reporting, uh, quite honestly, there's some evidence of it, but not necessarily a whole lot. I think the operating quarter at this point in time, when you start getting a sense of what damage has happened there, I think that will give you a surer space uh, to make you know, this kind of a call on whether the market is bottoming or not. At this point in time, I think one leg of the pain has been captured. The second leg of the potential pain is out there and I'd wait for that to play out before I were to you know, make more authoritative calls like, uh, like, like the bottom has happened. But don't you think markets will bottom out before that? Before the changes actually happen, markets will bottom out. That's how markets behave. Yeah, so I think that gives you a fair leg of time before you get that sense. I think to make that call that it's a one quarter phenomenon and the damage is going to be modest, that is what the market is doing at this point in time. It could be a little bit more deep seated than that. Uh, and I think that is where you're going to have uh, to think a little harder and be less confident of making a hard call. You know, inflation has been extremely high for a reasonably sustained period of time, firstly. Secondly, globally, it's been even higher relative to their own averages. Uh, and, you know, it's not as if inflation goes up for one quarter, there's a little bit of a policy reaction. The next quarter is weak from an earnings and a confidence perspective, and then things are back to normal. Uh, I do believe it is something that can stretch a lot longer. And that's why I would tend to be a little bit more cautionary, not necessarily on the markets, but making a call that it's just uh, that, you know, markets are going to bottom well before uh, the inflation pain is out. Aditya, nobody saw this inflation coming, including central banks. Till the month of Jan, the, the inflation definition was transitory. Everybody argued that inflation will come and go because economy will normalize, supply chains will get better, the cash for clunker scheme in US will be pulled back and that will bring inflation down. Today, everyone is convinced that inflation is here and it is here to stay. So if the incoming inflation call has gone wrong, the stubbornness of inflation, what are the chances that will also go wrong? So, I, you know, that's a reasonable possibility that, you know, People were too uh, blasé at that point in time, and now they're being too cautious. So I think that is a possibility, particularly in the context that demand is beginning to fall off everywhere, that supply chains by sheer you know, period of time will start getting, will start improving. Uh, so I think that is a, that is a possibility, right? And the, and the deleterious effects of, of, of rates that have risen across the world. So I think the fact that inflation could pull off faster than what people are talking at this point in time, I think is a very, very fair call. I think, as I said, I'm just going back to the same thing. I think the damage that six months of high inflation and a policy response uh, on the back of that, the damage that that could have done might actually extend a little bit longer. I also think at a market level, you know, part of the damage that has really been done has been in terms of interest rates and how markets are valued and how particularly growth businesses are, 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 are valued. You know, once you have a hard hit on valuations, uh, uh, the way you've, you've seen in the recent past, uh, for valuations for the same set of companies or the market at large, for them to come back quickly, uh, it's a possibility, but you need to discount that possibility a little bit because 
once once bitten twice shy period right uh, and do remember this is not like this time what you've seen for the last three four months globally is not like a dip you've seen on previous occasions over the last decade when you know stuff might have gone down for a month month and a half and then it's kind of retraced this is different you know will rate hikes both in india and globally be of the magnitude that people are talking about at this point in time maybe not they might not be that extreme but there clearly exists the possibility uh, that or there is the reality that rates have moved up they will move a little higher uh, and then you will have some impacts of, of those those rates tending to stay uh, higher for longer so again you know th there are no sureties in this market right but i don't think we should be bullish we should be willing a bull market uh, because that's what tends to happen when the market falls 10% and everyone's talking about uh, uh, you know inflation being transitory and then permanent and then transitory again so that's exactly what uh, howard marks uh, latest memo was about right and just yesterday writing that stock prices rise faster than companies profits so as we see that drop in valuations and uh, many that believe may have hit the reasonable zone other than i can i ask you the high pe stocks which have been talked about so much and the way they're down 30 to 40% even if you were to see the it large cap companies the way they're down would you now say it's a good valuation so i think the valuations are clearly much much more comfortable so the the you know the fat valuation risk that you were you were sitting on i think that has that has got removed from quite a few of these stocks right i think what remains and this is a broader call on the market and individual businesses is the growth risk right what we are you know the, the the bullish argument is valuations have come off you know uh, rates have got got absorbed so why won't those stocks go back to those same levels i think if growth remains undamaged then stocks will do better right i don't know if they will go back to those same valuations quickly because you have a rate environment that has changed you have a growth environment that has structurally stepped back a little bit right but i think in the event that the damage to growth is not material i think there is there is value in these in these highly valued stocks at this point in time but again i I'm, i go back to the same argument that unless someone is very clear right and is prepared to put his money on the back of what the growth damage has been or uh, will be uh, i think you just have to be a little bit more cautious in playing that argument of a quick growth rebound right i think that's one element i think the other way to look at it is you know do you make the call that this is a one or two quarter growth slowdown uh, and then it's back to what it was 12 months ago i think even if you can make that call you are in reasonably safe territory but if you are a little bit more wary and say okay the next one or two quarters are difficult we will climb back into the next year but you know growth levels will be softer there then you have you know you have the time to wait for maybe a better price okay and when you do that and wait for the better price um, i wanted to speak to you specifically about uh, metals um, enough argument has been made and has been said that you know banks will see the most of the growth but metals in particular you folks have also put out a report saying that the capex plans now are under threat uh, especially for the ferrous non ferrous companies given the ban on exports so just talking about what you said about growth what would your strategy be for the metal pack then so on the metals you know we've quite honestly been running a an, an underweight we've been running a zero weight in our portfolio in any case now that 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 weight was on the back of the fact that we fundamentally felt that there were growth risks globally and that meant that metals prices would be relatively vulnerable right i think what has happened subsequent which is really over the last weekend where there has been government inter intervention in terms of the free dynamics of the market here and i think upfront what it will do is it will basically lower profitability domestically uh, obviously lower cash flows right now i think that there, there are two elements to to this right one is you know the lower profitability the other is the multiples right the moment you start having interventions in the market uh, of this uh, this this uh, nature typically valuations tend to take a little bit of a hit right and in our view you are fundamentally getting a little bit of a combination of that that earnings will be lower valuations will be lower uh and since there is a certain uncertainty in terms of what the demand or the global commodity price outlook will be it makes no sense to be a hero at this point in time period and that's our very very simple view right 
The second point in terms of um, on, on whether uh, investment pipelines could be impacted in the domestic market in particular. You know, we actually think till 24, 25, you are fine because whatever is in the works will go ahead. I, I, I don't think you either have the balance sheet uh, stress, um, you know, or, um, or, 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 or the money access uh, issue, which will, which will get anyone to hold back from what is already underway. But I think that the second round of growth, which is FI25 onwards, for the moment, will remain on the drawing board, right? Uh, you don't have to start investing at this point in time, but until the dust settles a little bit on this, until I think players see how things play out, I think that second round of growth, which was 25 onwards, I think that will remain on the drawing board, not, not, not the immediate pipeline. And I think one of the good things with this metal cycle compared to the previous one is that balance sheets are in good shape. I think what the metals companies in India have managed to do very well over the last couple of years is really make a lot of cash and just clear out a lot of debt. So I think the balance sheet risk element that had played through to metal stocks in the last cycle, I think even if the cycle were to deepen, it's not going to play through in that meaningful manner. Right. Aditya, you know what Nayantara was asking you about IT? I want to know about the newly listed guys, huh? everything from Paytm to Zomato to even Nika for that matter, PB Fintech, what have you. All of them have come off quite significantly, um, you know, in this recent past uh, decline in the markets. Wondering whether you're relooking at any of these names. Yeah, so we have, we actually upgraded Zomato uh, to a buy uh, uh, quite recently when it had hit its lows, right? Uh, for the simple reason that we, we do believe they are real business models, period, right? Uh, and while we were cautious on them uh, at the prices they were trading it at at one point in time, I think the reality is that as uh, as these valuations have come come down, the, the, the reality is the business prospects have remained more or less the same. I think what we've seen with, with, with Zomato is that the dynamics of the businesses have also tended to change a bit in that there has been a surge or a focus towards profitability. Uh, and I think that's why you will start seeing a certain amount of value in a lot of these stocks. Uh, wherever there is confidence that the business model is, 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 is robust, and I think wherever you get the comfort that these managements are sticking to what they've been talking about and what they've been doing very well at, right? So amongst these stocks, we actually have buys both on Zomato, which, which I, as, as I mentioned, we recently upgraded, uh, and Nika, which again is a very consistent model, and we don't see the the, the, the broader economics uh, changing. I think the valuation framework does change a little bit simply because you know rates have gone up, the cost of capital is up, but otherwise the trajectory of growth uh, and profitability, the more stability you see there, uh, I think the more confidence there will be in, in the market paying up for these companies. Hmm. Interesting. Where else within the small or mid-cap space, Aditya, if at all, are you finding any value emerge? Or would you say, like, keep off from that, stick to the safer, larger caps? Uh, so at a strategy level, you know, generally, we, we would prefer low beta. Uh, we would prefer large caps. Uh, and we generally are running an underweight as far as the small and mid-caps are concerned. But I think a lot of these stories, rather than being thematic or sectoral, are actually stock up. Uh, so we have a bunch of stocks that we tend to like. I don't want to go into the names, uh, but you know we do we do publish, we do write them out. But a lot of them are basically individual stories rather than uh, necessarily um, uh, sector thematics as they run, and that is the very nature of of, of small caps um, and mid caps. What I would though caution is that I think you know as I mentioned uh, through the course of this conversation that one of the the, the challenges that we face is really the potential economic damage of inflation and some of the policy responses uh, to that inflation. And typically, it is the smaller businesses that tend to be a little bit more vulnerable to these broad macro pullbacks. So I think that's where we have a certain amount of extra caution as far as uh, the, the smaller businesses are concerned, because it's just not about valuation and growth getting impacted, but business risks also tend to rise a little bit more for them. Mm, interesting. Well, I can only say that it's some respite that both yesterday and today we've seen some green on the screen. Actually, we've made it back to that 16,300 mark. And yes, thank God it's Friday and thank God it's the weekend. Aditya, just wondering whether you've booked your tickets for uh, Top Gun or not? 
Nikunj and I have. <laughs> We're huge fans. It's releasing today. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to miss it. I haven't booked my tickets as yet. Uh, but I'm not going to be missing it. I can uh, tell you the end. <laughs> what happens to... Do you want to know? No, I don't. I Come don't. On, <laughs> you know, since, this since you and I of that generation that we were, uh, we were young adults when we saw it, uh, when, when the first one came, uh, I'm, I'm hoping to guess it rather than be told on TV. Sir, how old are you? You were a young adult when the movie came out. I think I was. Well, I'm just putting school. you in, putting myself was, in your generation. I was a teenager. So I was a teenager. Too old. I was a teenager when the movie came out. How old are you? Young enough to have uh, watched it alongside <laughs> you. Possibly. Okay, guys, I, I can tell you that young, old, or whatever, Maverick rules. So yeah, <laughs> let's put it at that. But good chatting with you, Aditya, as always. Thanks so much. Have a good, good weekend, guys. You too. Bye. Okay.